Crusader Kings 3 mods have been steadily improving over the years, and in the past few months, I've focused on a few of them, such as the Lord of the Rings mod, or the Fallen Eagle mod. Despite the great mods out there in Crusader Kings 3, it doesn't compare to the sheer number of mods in Crusader Kings 2. Today though, I want to discuss one of the most popular mods in Crusader Kings 2, which is known as Elder Kings. It gained over 250,000 unique visitors, and 112,000 subscribers, which is crazy for such a niche game. Perhaps you're one of those people who played it back in the day. Despite not being able to get a first release of the Elder Kings mod in Crusader Kings 3, this channel has now been given exclusive access, and we get a glimpse of this mod in its current condition. Although it's not yet complete, it still looks absolutely stunning, and you can already tell when it's released. It will be up there with all the other mods in Crusader Kings 3. Even if you hardly know anything about the world of Elder Scrolls, this still might be a great mod for you, with features making Crusader Kings 3 much more entertaining, and it brings it to a level that's worth giving it a go. So without further ado, let's get into the details of this mod. Let's first talk a bit about the lore of this mod, so you have somewhat of an understanding if you've never played the game franchise before. Set on the continent of Tamriel, Elder Scrolls is a magic-infused universe with a complex history, politics, and environment. Since the release of the first game in 1994, these open-world role-playing video games developed by Bethesda Softworks, have become increasingly popular over time. The franchise has therefore made some absolutely bonkers lore. One story that stood out to me within the lore is that Wood Elves made a green pact with a divine Ephi, the most important god of the Bosmeri pantheon. The deal was the Wood Elves don't harm the forest, don't take on the shape of beasts, which is all quite reasonable so far, but a Bosmir cannot eat plants and can only eat meat and animal products. And if you slay an enemy in battle, you are required to eat them. Seems rather tasty. Imagine if you're one of those plot armor superheroes, and you had to eat every enemy you kill in battle. That doesn't sound very fun, and probably not that kid friendly in any of the Marvel movies. The sheer volume of lore is staggering in this game, so we can't go through it all sadly, but let's focus on the parts that the modders have chosen with the two start dates so far. Within the Crusader Kings 3 mod, the start dates begin in both 2E4040 and 2E4050. Speaking to one of the modders, 450 is the interregnum date from Elder Scrolls 1, so people who play the game will be able to recognise some of the characters within the mod, thereby immersing themselves more in the game. The 2E4040 start date is chosen mainly because of the small lore snippets about General Atribus, which occurred between this start date and the 450 start date. Atribus was certainly an interesting character and was able to unite kingdoms around him. Could you, however, further expand your conquests as this character? He certainly did quite a bit of fighting before he died. In the 2E4040 start date, you also have this interesting civil war scenario between these two siblings, which separated the eastern and western kingdoms of Skyrim. Overall though, it's quite good to see that there are a few options to play in when you have this mod, and when this mod is further developed, we are certainly likely to see some more lore and characters being added within this mod. Moving on from the lore, I want to talk about the visual concepts of this mod, and starting with the art design of the map. I have to say I'm very impressed, and this Total Conversion mod has some incredible 3D animated buildings on the map, bringing the Elder Scrolls world to life. We only need to look at something like Vivek City or the Red Mountain to get a scale of the detailed landscape of the map. This is something that very few CK3 mods have been shown to be able to do, so I'm certainly sure it'll make you feel far more immersed within the game. When we compare the Elder King's map and Crusader King's 2, it is next level, and certainly a significant improvement. Also, looking at the 3D characters of this game, you again feel like there's quite a lot to offer. Why not play as a frustrated cat or an orc? if you have no interest in playing as humans. Again, the thought behind the costumes brings this mod to a new level, and time will only tell where they next improve. Could this be one of the best designed mods we'll see in Crusader Kings 3? Given how much time they've taken, it could certainly be a possibility. Delving into some of the game mechanics of this mod, you can clearly see there are some very interesting ones. In the Martial Focus tree, you now have a Plunger tree, which could make you an expert plunger, perhaps even better than the Vikings. The modders have also gone above and beyond, and decided to completely add a new lifestyle known as the Magical Arts. 
This is where you can master the ways of magic and become better at destruction, restoration and illusion. Magic is a key element of Skyrim and the developers have also decided to give you a spellbook allowing you to cast spells against other characters, provided you have magicka. These spells can either heal or hurt characters in a number of different ways within the game. There is such an array of options, and it gives you something to do. This again just adds extra depth to the mod. Your council also has new features, and they can do new things like managing the royal guards, or promoting cultural acceptance. The magical element of this mod also ties quite nicely into the religions of the game. There is currently a whole range of religions, adding significant depth to the game. Some of the bigger ones as well give you significant bonuses. In the Imperial Cult, for example, you can choose from lots of different patrons, giving some small bonuses like fertility and intrigue. Flavor has also been added to the Nordic Pantheon, also giving you some small bonuses. The modders have really put effort into this aspect of the game, and you can even see a dragon cult, which has human sacrifices, earning you piety. Summoning a dragon is also a thing within this mod, if you have this religion. There's also something called a Council of Eight, again adding to the religions of the game. I personally feel, out of all aspects, religion has been added to significantly, and it'll probably feel like you are playing a different game to Crusader Kings 3. So looking at this mod overall, a significant amount of work and effort has gone into making this mod, which has made it exceptional in both an artistic point of view, with perhaps some of the best 3D monuments you'll see in Crusader Kings 3, as well as in terms of the features in Elder Kings, has also been significantly added to. There's obviously tons of lore within this game, so the mod team can add almost an unlimited amount to this mod. But what we have now is great, and I can see lots of people enjoying it. I'm sure as time progresses, more features will be added within this game. And when it comes out, could this mod be the most popular mod within Crusader Kings 3, and do a similar thing in Crusader Kings 2? What do you guys think though? Are you excited about this mod, and do you think it will be popular? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you soon, and goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, J Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot, guys.